Welcome everyone uh, back to our first time on a camera in uh, probably a little while. Yes, and I think this is a really good episode for us to come back and be on camera for. Uh, but this is Perspectives with Lissette and Martina. I'm Martina. I'm Lissette. Yes, and welcome to Perspectives. Okay, so this series or the next few episodes <laughs> is yes. one that Lissette and I have been contemplating for quite some time. Uh, like for real, like it's been in our spreadsheet, in our in our business spreadsheet for probably like a year or so now. Like I think somewhere about yeah. there. Well, we want to talk about this issue. We do think it's going to be kind of uh, a provocative one, yeah. um, but it's a good one, and it's a, there's a lot of meaning behind it. So, for this episode and for the next few episodes uh, with this series, we're going to be exploring going to be exploring why men hate women yes 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 we are we are and if you're thinking like what? wait because we have gotten some of this reaction we've, we've uh spoken to a few uh well of our male friends or male colleagues that we haven't interacted with and it's been some kind of mixed responses but it really has thrown them off i think a few like well what do you mean well men don't hate women and well, that's we not really hate men. Right. Like that's not that's not true. What do you mean? And uh so that you know, we're gonna explore, I think, particularly in this first episode, really look at what do we mean when we say men hate women? And you know, talk a little bit about what we're gonna be focusing on in like the next few episodes too, but primarily this one, kind of setting the stage for for this series and really where we've gotten some of our inspiration from. I mean, hell. Both of us are women, so <laughs> that's inspiration number one. <laughs> life, life, yeah, just, just life. life, just life. But then you know, uh, there's a book that we both have been uh, reading and listening to that just really brings up, uh, I think, so many statistics. You know, for people who's like, well, where's the stats on this, and how do you know this? And well, there's uh, data out there. There are some data gaps, as this author also talks about. But there's data oh. out there. Yes that talks about and explores the different just things that women go through yeah. even on a daily basis. So Lisette, I think we can go ahead and get into it, you know? Yeah, I think when we both started talking about men hate women, comma why, um, it really was, a lot of it came from, you know, things that we, we've, obviously see on, on, on TV or on the news. Uh, and a lot of it is definitely violence towards women. And, and you see abuse and assault, whether it's physical, sexual, and um, and you, you hear about the missing women, uh, you know, indigenous women, black women, um, in, in countries like, like Mexico, you hear about women going missing and just the violence towards women. And I think a lot of times that's what, we connotate as hate towards women is sort of that violence towards it and, and you know, and abuse and, and things like that. Um, or, you know, or getting, you know, you know, unwanted attention from men and like, and all these things. Uh, but I think in, in just the course of the time that we've been thinking about this series or just like this topic, but also just, you know, the book that Martina mentioned that we recently came across, it really started kind of looking at, it's much more than that. Yep. It's definitely something that is, um, can be subtle sometimes that you don't really quite see it until somebody points it out to you and you're like, oh, I never thought about that. Um, and just really quickly, the, the book that we're, you know, referencing has a really good title. Like I was like, yes, this, this is yeah. why, because I was the one that did the research and trying to find, I was like, I need to know more about women and why men hate women. And when I put men hate women into Google, this is the first thing that popped up. up. <laughs> and, and the name of the book is Invisible Women, uh, Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. Such a good title. And it's by Caroline Criado uh, Perez, and I remember when it, I remember when I 
opened it up and you know was reading what it was about i was like oh my god it's gonna be such a dry because you know you never really know when it's about data and things you're like you told me about (laughs) you know because we're not data people like, yeah, it's not. Look, more power out there to the women who doing data. Thank God, because we damn sure don't want to. But that's the kind of just like data. I, it, yes, yes. Go ahead, because it 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 is some good data. It's some good stats. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, it's it's written very well. It's just it read, and you know, if you get the audio book like Martina and I did. Um, it just makes, I remember I was in my car a lot of times that I'd be arguing, you know, just with myself there in the car, like just, you know, I'd be pausing it and just kind of working through my thoughts because there were just so many moments of like, oh my gosh, I never thought about how this specific thing is designed in a way where it's for men, right? Like it's men, it's designed for that, that default male or just these things or my goodness, we really are invisible. Like nobody's thinking about us. Nobody's considered. And I, and when I think more of like why there is so much violence towards women, it is more because there is that invisibility that comes with being a woman in our society. And I think it's across, you know, the world. Like it's not just yeah. in the United States. I think when you look across the world, and I think this book highlights some of those things in different countries and and gives you some data from like different countries and things like that and I you know when I I remember just sending Martina like a voice message and being like you know this hatred towards women is just definitely much more subtle and has been sort of you know brought on by the way society has made women be and like the, the roles that we're supposed to be taking on and the, and, and we, we talk about this a lot there's a box that exists for different things and there's a box for women and what they're supposed to be like in we'll stay in the box mm-hmm. and if you don't the and now the moment has come with women are like yeah no that box is mm-mm. it's not for me and now we're seeing so much more being done to like oh, you, you shouldn't be stepping out of that box. You shouldn't be stepping out of that role. You shouldn't be stepping out of that. And I think that's where the much more overt hatred, hatred that nobody calls it hatred. You know, nobody calls it, but at least for me, it comes across as hatred when you're trying to control either my choices, my body, whether it's for my body, whether it's for anything. Like, it's definitely uh, a little bit of there, but... Martina, I'll let you chime in as well. Well, you know, you touched on a lot of what I was going to say too, but I think really it is the, you know, it's just that title, Invisible Women. And, you know, because again, as you mentioned, like, I think for the majority of people, I think just across the world, when we think of um, why men hate women, you know, some of the first things that might come to mind are are the more violent acts, the more violent physical acts, which are definitely horrible there's not to downgrade things that have happened from assaults to murders and things like that and because these acts against women these horrible acts even when you look at things like honor killings and things like that it's a man typically wanting to control a woman and because women because men have deemed it that way women are often seen as less inferior i mean inferior um and vulnerable and weak and uh, frail and so which makes quote unquote easy targets for many of things and even listening to uh, to the book it talks about even on you know just give an example on like public a uh, public transportation if you're on a crowded bus or a crowded uh, uh, a crowded train you know someone may be rubbing up against you and it could be the most subtle thing but it's like yeah I know we're standing close together but you don't have to be rubbing on me but a lot of women just don't even like say anything think about it yeah. yeah they don't think about it because i mean a unfortunately it's probably something that's happened more than once yeah. or again they don't retaliate or say anything because of why you know like the nothing's, gonna, policy, nothing's gonna be done yeah, nothing there's nothing law enforcement can do you know oh. that's always the thing you know yeah. and law enforcement is so um 
reactive and not proactive just in general. Oh, until it's somebody of color, then it's probably to shoot you. But uh, that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, but today, yeah, I think so. It is just like outside of these violent physical acts, you know, we're going to get into a little bit later talking about like, you know, the economy and just the workforce and how women are contributing in ways I don't even think sometimes women even realize how we're contributing to society but we're completely invisible because of the way that society, and really, you know, there are very few, and I do not know the stats or I guess names of countries or cities that would have this, but most, I think, places in the world are dominated by men. That's yeah. the cross, you know, from, you know, economy, religion, households, it's, most of them are male dominated. And that really has trickled down into every facet. Um, you can name it, it has trickled down into it to the, if it hasn't trickled down or you think it hasn't trickled down, it has, and it's invisible because nobody actually be like, like, oh my God, that's so true. When you think of, it's, it's like the light bulb goes off yep. and you're like, you know, how did you mention it? That's actually so true. Women are not considered for those sort of things. Um, so yeah, and so that's why, you know, really this, as, as I said, mentioned, as we got deeper into looking at this topic, it's just, it's so much more. And it's just, it really is all around. It's all around us. <laughs> no, I think, you know, there are probably more places where it's more evident than others, but it's definitely, it's just, it's really everywhere. It's in day to day and it's really almost no escaping it. That's sad when I said that out loud. Yeah. yeah I mean, you bring up such, I mean, that's such a good point. Like you can't really escape it. Not the way uh -oh. the world is set up now, no. You know, and, you know, it makes me think, you know, we we have talked a lot about, you know, race, uh, racism and prejudice and all these things. And, and, you know, you know, black and brown individuals not being able to escape it. I think as women, there's so much uh, against us that we can't escape it. And even and when we try to bring it to light, we get met with things of like, well, that's not true. Where's the data? Where are the statistics? You know. We got a whole book for you. Because got a whole book for you. Yeah. Although there's still a lot of gaps on there, but mm -hmm. but it's one of those things where it's like, how is it that my lived experience and our lived experience as women isn't enough? You know, like that should be enough for you if there are 90% of women saying this is an issue, this is happening. Mm -hmm. How is that not enough for you? Yeah, like, I do not believe it's all, like, yeah, you know, like, and and you know, and I and I think about those times where, um, you know, when people are like, well, why didn't she say something when she was, you know, assaulted or you know, she was raped or you know, and it's like because nobody believes us, nobody. nobody. And nobody because the system is set up not to protect the women but to protect the man who is typically the perpetrator of set assault and i think that that is that is that feeling that as reading the book and just kind of thinking back to just me growing up and navigating this society of like you know, times that maybe I stayed quiet or didn't say anything or was just like, you know, what's well, not even, it's not even worth, mm -hmm. you know, bringing it up because, you know, nothing's okay. going to really be done or, or, or whatnot. And it's because we as women, for the most part, know that nobody's really going to do anything, mm -mm. you know, and it's just like, well, that's why you don't hear it. That's why you don't have the stats that you're looking for because we're, there's no safety net for women to be like, okay, here's what happened and, and for someone to really believe you and, and be there for you. I think, I think there's a lot more being done now to try to create those safety nets and, and those uh, places for women to be... Um, to be able to be vulnerable and to be like, hey, this happened, like, what are my rights? But for the most part, 
women's rights are always being tried are always trying to be taken away like they stay trying they stay trying women all the time you know and i'm like like hello like we uh i don't remember if it was in the book or if something that I was watching today where they're like, you know, women's rights are human rights. I'm like, yes, like, how was that? I think it was the book. I don't remember. I've, I've been watching way too many things. <laughs> in, pre in preparation for this, but you know, it's, it's just very interesting because even when you, when you start, when you go to YouTube and you put men hate women, there's a lot of videos out there, and a lot of them are done by men. Of course. And who, okay, I'm gonna let you say it. Go ahead, no, go ahead, Martina. Go ahead. No, no, you, you, you've been the one actually have have watched them, and you've given me the commentary. <laughs> oh, so it's just you know, and I think this is another reason why you know we felt sort of strong about doing this series is because there's so many things that we've seen and that like I, you know and that we found where it's like you know I think one of the titles uh, of the videos I probably watched like not even five minutes of it because it was just oh my God, I think it was like you know it's just something like the modern women is gonna die alone I think that was the title of the video and I was like what, I was like, what? of course it was a man huh. and he was just talking about like he may mention of like, you know, women just being too independent, like, you know, and he said something, it was very interesting because he said something about um, how women who make a lot of money, mm -hmm. you know, are you going to be buying your man stuff? Like, why do you know, and this whole idea of like, you're not going to buy me stuff. Like the man is always going to be looking out for you and buying you stuff and buying you, you know, are you going to buy your man a car? And I was like, I could, mm -hmm. if he could get over his ego, I buy him a car. <laughs> if not, I buy you a sandwich. I was like, but it was just this whole idea. I mean, it was just a very interesting of like the mentality that I'm just going to go on the limb here that probably most men have. Even the ones, uh, yeah, I think even ones who don't realize that they're yeah. there. Yeah. Where it's like, well, you really, I think they get so hung up on the money part of it. Like, really because yeah. he, they, they, he, he brought that's it up. What they got to offer. You know, he, <laughs> you know <laughs> thank you. He kept, like, he kept bringing that. that up of like, you know, and then then he went into this whole conversation and that's when I probably I think I stopped watching was he was talking about like you know you lose your femininity you know uh, you know as you become more independent as you start like oh I can do this I can do that which is interesting because I have a few friends who are very much independent and things are like they can they can fix things in their homes and they can like do these different props to them because I can't I I'm one of those women that can't. Like, I'd be calling them to say, hey, him. like, you, you, but I know that they've been sort of called out for that. They're like, well, you don't need me. You know, like, men have, like, said, like, there's like, you don't need me. Like, you're, you know, you're out here doing your thing and you could do, like, and I'm like, you're, again, the fragility that men have. <laughs> Uh, around what and, I, and it goes back to how these these roles that we're supposed to be in and these boxes that we're supposed to be in just perpetuate th this idea this overt and subtle hatred towards women because you're stepping out of what society has said you're supposed to be and what man, what men are supposed to bring to the table versus what women bring to the table, and the minute you start talking about, you know, equity and all these things, everything gets thrown back to your face. Of like, well, then I'm not gonna open the door for you anymore. Wow, like, like maybe that's all what, you got. <laughs> what does common courtesy have to do with quality? Like, and I think there's this inflation of what should be common courtesy towards any individual, you know, where it's like, no, like, well, 
then I'm not going to pay for your dinner. Like you, we can go have these on it. I was like, that's fine. That's what you want to do. What you want to do? I probably won't see you again, but that's cool. That's and I'm like, cool. The, and like, and that's your priority. And you will find that's someone cool. who will. Yeah, but it's not gonna be me. At least not the first date. But I think like there's these again. You know, I think we're, and I think it's gonna be a theme towards like our next, you know, few episodes, is the overt hatred, you know, and the and the subtle hatred that comes across because of the way society has just created these systems and these ways of thinking that that revolve around women um, and policies um, and just design, like just the, that. That is probably one of the things that I'm very interested in, in digging into. It's just the design of, of different things, whether we're talking technology, whether we're, we're talking about even, um, you know, buildings. Like, I remember in the book, there's a, a chapter where she's talking about um, bathrooms. Yeah. And, and I was like, I... I was only, that only benefited men. And I, it was one of those things where I was like, I never, again, I never would have thought that is something like that I know we'll probably dig in, in in future episodes, but just, you know, for you all to just think about ways that, you know, as you kind of think about your everyday existence, if you're a woman and you're, you're watching or listening to this, think about ways that maybe you never really thought that, you know, things are designed because even transportation um, and how that's designed more towards men. Like, there's just so much around us that I think if we pause and just look around, we're like, oh, this definitely probably benefits the traditional thinking of what men are supposed to be doing more than what women do. But I'll, I'll, I'll take a pause and well, I pulled the you and I was writing down some notes. <laughs> I thought I was like, I saw you right. no. You know, so I'm like, let me write it down. So I wrote down a few things here. But really, I think you touched on it a little bit. Gender roles. Gender roles are a big topic, I think, of discussion right now. I think uh, there's a lot happening around gender just in general. But the tr gender roles, men, I think a lot of them really, I say straight men, I hold to these old ass traditions and the way things are supposed to do it. And like, you know, for men, I understand like this isn't all men, but I think even the best of men who have the best intention have some of these thoughts, like, because that's, that's all they've known. That's, the, that's the way it's been passed down. And yeah. men already have so much inside that they are told that they need to hold in and not cry and not be emotional. Yeah. Although anger is an emotion. So just cause you're not, you know, loving on somebody or crying all the time being being angry is is, is still an emotion but for yes. some reason that one does not get called out as a as an emotion because it's men who normally do it mm -hmm. but, but if a woman do it especially a black oh. woman we so are emotional. yeah we're like you know we're hysterical or she's just an angry black woman but yeah. nobody talks about the angry black i mean the angry well they do talk about i think angry black men yeah but i think men in general is so much is not put towards just how anger really is a part of that emotion, but that's getting off the tangent. I don't want to go into, but I think what you and I had talked about in a previous episode uh, of one of our most recent uh, episodes about this idea of women being alone, and you yeah. talked about this horrible man. I'm gonna just call him horrible because that's all that I've been presented with of that first five minutes that you watch. What like what is the deal with being alone? But I think because for women, a lot of this, and we've been raised this way too. I think a lot of women, mm -hmm. my mom, dad, or whomever, excuse me, grandma, aunties, you don't want to be alone. I think that's always been kind of pushed into women's heads more than men because apparently, like, well, if you want to have kids, you know, you got to get started here. Um, and it's just been a thing, and like even again for parents who have the best intentions, they just like, for some reason, being, people just think being alone is so horrible. But it's like, I think, again, like now we're, you, you know, we're into the 21st century. And again, going back to TikTok, and I think really 
will set you, uh, you and me as well. This idea of being alone is not a bad thing. It's just, you know, like it's now we're, I think, in a time where women, because women, even though we don't have a lot, of, a lot of liberties compared to our other counterparts, we uh, have more of the wherewithal to do what we want at times and yeah. can choose when we want to be in a relationship. If you want to get married not until you're 45, if you want to get married at 20, and maybe you get married again at 35, it didn't work out. If you want to have kids when you're 40, you have kids when you're 19, whatever. It's like there's so many things that are, you know, that are bending the rules now. And so for this dude, and, you know, I really say, I think that's the first thing people do always bring up is that you're going to end up alone. And that's, I'm like, so, like, what is that? And the thing is, it's like, why is that bad? You know, listen, I love the Golden Girls, okay? There's a convention that's supposed to be happening. I can't remember. I hope I haven't missed it. There's a convention the Golden Girls. I want to go to I'm all for it getting rooming up with four other bitches or three other bitches and we get old and we live together and we just hoe it out that's cool that's cool you know if i don't end up married or maybe i do end up married and my husband passes away whatever the situation is it's like i just like what is this what is wrong with people wanting to be alone like i under, and i think for parents and people who love us they still got this negative thing well I, you know i just I, I just don't want you to be by yourself or be alone. Honey, I love being by myself. That's what I'm saying. I love my company. I love my company more than anybody else's company. I love myself. Um, and so I just like wanted to touch on that because that was just that that whole being alone part just really kind of works my nerves because it's okay. And if you don't want to be alone too, not everybody wants to be alone. That's okay. That you know, for you, that is a real thing. You may not want to end up alone, and that's okay. And I think your person will come whenever it's time. And you about to, I, I feel like you, you say it. Say no, it. I, no I, you, you, you just kind of said it. Because I was thinking of like this, this idea that you have, like this like fairy tale idea that you have to meet your person like in your 20s right. and married in like yeah, your yeah. late 20s and in your 30s or you might have like a kid or like that, that to me is just a fairy tale. Like your person could come at any moment like it could come when you're you know 20 when you're 30 or 40 50 60s we've i mean i've heard stories of people meeting their person in their like 70s yeah like they have old people in nursing homes you they know married again so they have like so this idea that you know you kind of have to be this young and even just the thought of it's just these older men who just kind of want to be with like younger women who are like who look like they're teenagers or whatever like that's a whole other topic and a whole other thing but you know but there is this sort of you know i i don't know whether it's society whether it's just in general this idea of like oh you want to get them you know you want to get your women when they're innocent you know when they have it like you know but but it's so you know because it's like you hear men men in like their 30s 40s talk about like well you don't want to be with like a used woman and i'm like what does that even mean because you're definitely a used man sir <laughs> like what so, does that mean <laughs> so it's like but you know i think it's one of those things again that um goes into this idea of being invisible you know because if you don't fit this made-up narrative of what women a woman is and like you fall like you know you just you know women continue to just fall through the cracks you know and when you get into what you know when you are a black woman when you are an indigenous woman if you are someone um uh, that's Latina or Mexican, like there's all these things that then just become so much worse, right? Like the the statistics become worse or the lack of statistics become worse because nobody is looking into these women. Like I, you know, it's so it's, there's just a lot to explore um, around why men hate women. Mm -hmm. And it, it's much more than just, the whole thing of like well you're too independent 
or you're you're just you know this or you know it's it's not all men I was like look it could be all men because this world is designed for y'all so I don't I was like it could be it, I'm like it, it may not but it's it's the idea that I can't walk in the streets without fearing all men like no that's it. Yeah, like and I, and that's in broad daylight. Don't it be yeah, nighttime? Doesn't have to be nighttime. It like doesn't have to be night. Mm -mm. Like, perfect example. Like I went to um, it's a restaurant that's actually like not too far from my house. I walked in. It was just uh, me and there was two uh, workers who were women. I was ordering my my tacos and tortas because I was gonna bring it home, and a guy came in and I immediately was like, "Ooh." There's only three women. There's this man that came in. I don't know him. I don't know anything about him. So I was on alert. Like I put my phone away and I was just like, Yep. We'll be on alert. And then you know, there's some other people came in and I was like, okay, I can come oh, down. Yeah, yep. People came in and all right, chances of anything happen. But my first instinct is to go on high alert. Mm -hmm. If a man that comes in, I don't know who you are. If you're behind me, in front of me, if I'm on an elevator. I think, oh, I think about that too on the elevator. There's some weird shit that happens on the elevator. I'm like, I don't, I, you know, and, 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 a, and a man comes in, I am praying until I get off that elevator. Mm. And I'm thinking of like, oh, Lord Jesus, what, what do I do? What, what do I have on me if I need to be like, because I, you just don't know what can happen, you know, in a few seconds. Like, it doesn't even take a long time for, for something to happen to women. Like, it could be, you know, and it, so that's the thing like it's much more than just um just the violence or just it's the idea that we can't afford to walk around and not fear and not think about what could happen to us with any man because the sad part is it could even be the men in your life who you've known yeah because that's normally where shit starts at yep. home <laughs> that's normally where it, it starts. could be a man that you trusted and you you know you thought you knew and and you didn't so it's just so much it's just so much to explore and i think that's why we're we're having this conversation yeah if all the men out there who are gonna say something i'm trying to be politically correct but it's my channel though if all the men would be like well you know I'm just not going to do this and I don't want to do that. Don't be stupid. Like, that's not what, that's not what we're trying to say. We're yes. just trying to be aware because you have lived your whole life as a man, you're blinded, you know? Be open-minded. Yeah, be, be open-minded. And I would think for men of color, you know how it is to be profiled anyway. So you're not... I, wouldn't hope to be completely blinded, but men of color do shit too. They are not the exception. They do things to women, horrible things to women, um, invisible things to women. They are a part of it too. But I would hope they would be a little bit more open because they know how it is to be the other and to be different. And that's the thing that we're going to be talk talking about. Just realizing that we can't always consider ourselves. You know, we live in a world where we have to consider other people. That's yeah. the world that we're in. And for women, we're, I think women are really, like you said, are always on alert. It can be in broad daylight. It can be at 8 a.m. in the morning. You know, it, you know, it can be at midnight, wherever. And I think it's just really to be open-minded and to, yeah, come into this and just see how the other side, the other gender feels about it and our thoughts behind it because we're the one that's living this every day um so that's all i wanted to say and so i think we I, I i think we're gonna wrap up this first one yeah so thank you for for listening if you have any thoughts any comments feel free to either comment below if you're on on youtube uh reach out to us dm us on instagram uh facebook uh and, and let us know uh what what your thoughts are about this sort of you know this first episode this intro to this uh men hate women conversation that we're going to be having for for the next uh few weeks uh because we definitely want to hear from you all 
uh, both from you know the 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 male perspective and and the and the female perspective, because um, we definitely want to, uh, we want to stay open minded too, and we want to you know this is a platform where it's called perspectives. We yeah. we know that we all come with different perspectives, so feel free to share that. But you know we're we're gonna be coming back with a few more episodes. Uh, and continue exploring and, and having this conversation and you know and hopefully by the you know the end of uh, these next few weeks you know we all come out just a little bit more uh, knowledgeable or a little bit more um, just open-minded to what's around us and we, we kind of uh, see but also I think I hope we as women just start really you know understanding and really demanding more for for each other mm -hmm. um and, and being allies to each other um across generations across ethnicities and, and races because i think um you know the invisibility of women you know it, it really doesn't have any boundaries um for us to see so we'll you know we'll explore and and then we'll see you uh see you and, and talk to you uh next week Bye, guys. Bye.